The top five SmackDown moments continue on Fog Wrestling, aka Five Flavors of Matitude. Welcome back, guys, to the channel, and it is time for us to go through the best five moments from WWE SmackDown, the 10th of October. 2002, 21 years ago, back when wrestling was great. It was great, guys. Although it wasn't the greatest SmackDown, but here, even by today's standards, it would probably be the best show of the year, wouldn't it? So yeah, it wasn't the greatest SmackDown, but here, man, it tops anything we're going to see in this current era. I miss the days when we could actually talk about wrestling being great in a, a current tense rather than a past tense. But, I mean, whatever. That's life. Life ain't fair. Life goes on, and you know what? We're moving, we're moving further and further away from that. Like the ruthless aggression errors turning decades, decades old. Anyway, let's move us straight into number five. It was Eddie Guerrero versus the big fat ass, aka Rikishi the Kish. I will put this ass in your face. That seems to be Rikishi's uh, gimmick, uh, gimmick motto. That's what he wants to do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why didn't he? Why didn't this guy just run off Stone Cold over with his ass? Why right. did he really need to use a car? Imagine that pickup truck. We also didn't want a stunt double for that. Absolutely, like he already did at Survivor Series '99. But, but yeah, we get Eddie versus Rikishi, bit similar to the match we had last week. Chavo gets involved. We see a double stink face. Rikishi couldn't pass up the opportunity to have two Mexican men's faces in his big ass. He had a one cheek for each little Mexican and I mean his ass was big enough to go around as Taz said. Yeah, they couldn't El Paso this one up guys, they were rammed right up there damn it. Yeah, so um, yeah. Not and then El Paso lasso won so. Yeah, uh, Eddie Guerrero needs to ditch that finishing move, just go back to the frog splash, you know you want to. Coming in at number four, I mean it wasn't great but it is the bikini contest, I mean look it's not a bad moment, it's never going to be a bad moment. I think the question is, will you get better moments than this? If you not, like, every time you've got one, they're always going to be decent. They're, they're never going to suck. Yeah, I Unless mean, it's, like, Mae Young and Mueller, then... Yeah, right. if it's Mae Young and Mueller, then it's probably going to be number one in the top five, five worst moments, so I accept that. But, I mean, yeah, a bikini contest is never going to be bad. The only question is, are you going to find five better moments to put in front of you? In this, this case on SmackDown, we didn't. That's why it's coming at number four. Tori Wilson defeats Don Marie for the second week in a row. Last week, I think, was bikini. I think this week was lingerie. Does it really matter? Yeah, it, evening gown, evening wear match. Yeah, it's Tori Wilson taking her clothes off. It's, it's all good stuff at the end of the day. But I do feel like this is beginning to mean a little bit more. And you've got the story of Al Wilson as well. So it feels like there's a little bit more involved. It feels like there's a third party so to speak, because we have Mr. Al in the background watching on. So, yeah, it just feels like it's a little bit more relevant than perhaps some of the uh, previous contests in the last few weeks. Coming at number three, though, we have Los Guerreros, Benoit and Angle. So Benoit and Angle are just fresh, getting a telling off from Stephanie McMahon. Benoit leaves the office first after both men claiming they were not going to leave the office. And to be honest, that was a pretty good moment. It could have been on this list. Could have been, but... Both men arguing, after you. No, after you. But Benoit does decide to leave first. And Guerrero starts planting some seeds in Benoit's head. He didn't tell him to kill his family, but he did tell him that Angle might be coming after him. But uh, Guerrero says that Benoit... Uh, Guerrero says to Benoit that Angle is considering taking a year out from WWE, he's going to plan to train for the Olympics and that perhaps Angle wouldn't mind being suspended for a year because he plans on leaving anyway. And this gets Benoit thinking, damn, maybe Kurt Angle is going to turn on me tonight and make my ankle snap. Angle then comes out and tries to address his homeboys like only Kurt Angle can. Los homies! Los homes! What's going on, homies? Los homes! You're the big fat ass in your face tonight, they say! It's but, weird um, though, see when they lose, they make a big deal at the stink face, but when they win, they don't even mention it. It's like, I saw it, we just got raped by Rikishi's ass. We won! We well, won. When, they, when they win, they probably just go backstage and brush their teeth. But, but when they lose, they go backstage and just fuck with bathing it, bathing the shite, and the eat quiche. Sh eat shite and just accept it. Embr have a, embrace. Have an extra dish of the quiche. Embrace the quiche. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, the, the Guerreros, for some reason, don't really want to 
no angle here. They just they just take off and leave Angle. Angle then gets paranoid. He thinks they were talking about him. Angle says to Benoit, look, you better tell me what you were saying or I'll beat the truth out of you. But Benoit is no buying it. He just laughs at Angle and leaves and Angle's just left there with his empty threats and empty promises. Yeah, I mean, you know what? Kurt Angle delivers. But Benoit, work on the laugh, mate, and we might have something here. The laugh is unbearable at points. Ah, it's so put on into like... Like, you could just imagine, right? I mean, this isn't a joke about his family, but you could just imagine when he's in a situation where, you know, he's he's with, like, family and friends and he just puts this fucking laugh on. Na Nancy cracks the worst joke of all. Ha ha ha! Cripple crossface. Dun -dun 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 -dun. You know, that sort of deal, but... I just never really... I think Benoit's such a serious guy that I just never really bought his laugh. No, it would... It, it would be like Bret Hart laughing. I just... I couldn't really imagine. Dirty stinking eye. <laughs> Did Bret Hart ever laugh? Fuck, I don't know. Probably when Triple H tore his quad. <laughs> Four they hour. still put on a better match than fucking Brett. <laughs> <laughs> fucking did this one. Four out of ten. Uh, Come to number two, we have the tag team main event, Edge and Mysterio taking on the surprising team of Tajiri and Brock Lesnar. Do you think Tajiri and Brock Lesnar ever team up again? Probably not, no. Would Brock want to team up with Tajiri again? It was a good match, so why not? <laughs> he lost. But, uh, they did lose, though. I forgot about that. Yeah, tag title tournament. Brock and Tajiri crash out in the quarterfinals, and then Brock decides to just batter everybody after the match. It was strange, because during the match, it was like Edge and Ray were able to deal with Brock Lesnar, but as soon as the match was over, Brock just turned into a different beast altogether. That was like Festus with and, um, Yeah, he, he, he annihilated everybody, and that was the end of that. And then coming at number one, it is... Your number one dose of matitude. It was Matt Hardy and Undertaker starting off the show with a brawl. So with Matt Hardy coming out bragging about how he's beat the Undertaker now multiple times. Taker makes his way to the ring with a cast on. Taker's not happy. He's beelining for the ring. Matt warns him, hey Taker, don't get in here. I'll have to beat you again. I'll have to beat you down then. Taker gets in and we get a brawl between Matt and Taker. And it was a very good brawl. Taker hits Matt with a cast, completely busts him open. And it made Matt look really good because not many people go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Undertaker in like a fist fight brawl and don't die. And, you know, Matt actually held his own for bits and survived. He did. And I think you've got to say as well, with Matt Hardy and Taker, I think it's been the best work of Taker in the recent weeks. Honestly, I think with Lesnar, it's been a bit lacklustre. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm enjoying the Matt Taker feud more than I more than I am the... That's uh, what I like about Taker in 2002. Champion or not, he seems like he's got multiple feuds at one time. Yeah, he's, and he's willing to work with these younger guys. Although saying that, guys, the rest of the Taker stuff on this show sucked. But that's why it's not in this top yeah, five moments. that's why it's Taker and Matt is number one and none of that Taker cheating on Sarah shite is anywhere on this list. Anyway, guys, that's it. Matt and Taker comes in at number one. Fuck it, I want to see Matt Hardy versus Undertaker. No mercy. No, Matt. Hell in a cell. Why not? Yeah, just like Brock Lesnar can, I don't know, face Edge or something. Hi, Jerry. Give us mad versus Taker. Anyway, guys, that's it. Leave a comment down below. Catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.